Salam Alaikum and welcome to Lebanon. I spent more than five months in the Middle East last year. Never made it to Lebanon, but it's very different to other Middle Eastern countries. So when Tilly left India to go to a wedding in Italy, I thought, oh, I'll come check out Lebanon. I've got two friends that live here, currently staying in the coastal town of Byblos. But today I'm heading into the mountains where one of my friends lives. And yeah, I don't really know what the plan is today, but let's start exploring Lebanon. made it into some sort of micro bus, didn't even need to hitchhike, he's going to take me all the way to Antilias, which is where I go left into the mountains for one dollar, so no complaints from me. What's your name brother? Ravi. Rabia. Rabia. Rabia, yes. Rabia. Yeah. Rabia, yes. Rabia is taking me the rest of the way. Yeah, let's see you. Yeah, Allah. thank you, my friend. You're welcome. Masalama. It's Viha. This is Viha. Okay. So you take one, take some lemon, squeeze a bit of lemon on it. Okay. Just enough. And then he's going to get some pomegranate molasses. And then you pop it on. Oh. Oh. oh my god, oh my god, looks delicious, let's try. This is like pomegranate sauce. Yeah, now you have it. Okay. That's sweet sauce. Let's see what it's saying. Mmm. Mmm. No, oh, so good. This is egg with meat. <laughs> and uh, Thomas, what is this one? That's zata. It's thyme. It's zata. Like, yeah, it's thyme. And then you add lebanon to it, and then you have one tomato slice on it like this. Oh, you make a little slice. Mm -hmm. We finished breakfast now, and we're going. Where are we going, Thomas? We're going to the train station. Rie train station. Oh, the train station. Yeah, it's like... an old train station. Gonna see it. Woo. I haven't introduced Thomas yet as well. He's my friend who I stayed with him and Michelle, who's not here today, uh, in Qatar when Tilly left. You miss Qatar, Thomas? Not that at all. <laughs> Me neither. Just the football. <laughs> okay, so we're now at like an old train station which was abandoned because of the economic problems here a long time ago and look they have just old old steam trains just sitting here rusting away i always wonder like the last guy who left here he left like i'm coming to work tomorrow but there was no didn't, know, didn't know he was never coming back <laughs> you would never have somewhere like this in england just all like sitting here there's another train station up in Tripoli. It's smaller than this one. This was, I guess, the biggest train station back in the time in all of the Middle East because uh, there are uh, the hangars in front have like the biggest machinery you could find at the time. Right. Like huge places. So Lebanon basically had like the best like travel train infrastructure like in the whole yeah. of the middle east yeah and then one day it just all shut and then there's nothing there's now yeah. no trains no metros yeah lebanon was like uh in the top four economical countries in the 1960s right because loads of people used to come from europe it was like not like the like dubai is now but kind of uh, like rich people would come here to like yeah. chill in beirut just and spend like the time here because it's the it's kind of like a mix of cultures between Western and yeah. Middle Eastern. This is crazy. I think this is like the, the furnace that used to power the engine. I'm not 100% sure how steam trains used to work. But I think yeah, it was like a big fire that would create the energy and release the steam. This feels like it could collapse at any point. There's a tree coming out of this train. That's how long it's been here for. Nature has taken over. 
this is where they repair metal parts, I guess. Inside, they change parts. You're gonna see a bigger warehouse. This is Atelier de ah, Fonderie. De Fonderie, yes, it in means, French. Yeah, it means uh, the place where they do ironworks. Wow. So this is where the furnaces were and everything that's metalwork, you can see. You can see the big metal tanks, iron tanks. Wow. Loads of sheep wool. I don't know, put it here, maybe where someone was sleeping here or something. What a waste. I oh know, it's so sad. They should turn it into a museum. Polish and German machines. I, it's all Polish and German. Yeah. You could, you could read on them, I guess. They are uh, they're Grafenstaden. That's the most German sounding name I've ever heard. <laughs> Grafenstaden. <laughs> And this was also like fix parts for trains, make parts for trains. Yep. The roof used to, used to be half tiles, half glass. The short area is glass because when the sun rises, it rises on the side of the tiles so that light would come in from the side of the glass and it wouldn't be too harsh. And when oh. the sun is setting, the light will still remain the same while getting in the side of the glass because it, it sets on the side of the glass. That's clever. Yeah. People are smarter than we are. I know what, what, what generation of stupid idiots. Yeah, what went wrong? <laughs> oh my god, it just gets bigger and bigger. <laughs> this is where they used to dock the trains to take off parts from the bottom. Gym workout. <laughs> oh. You need help. Yeah, I need help. That's <laughs> stuck. It's just hangar after hangar filled with old trains, old train parts, old machinery. So sad, so sad. All left here just rusting. Closed in 1975, like. Uh, they abandoned fully. Yeah. But originally shut down in the 1940s. And yeah, the first train came through here in 1895. And during the Second World War, it was used by France to build planes. Um, and when did you say the Syrian army captured it in? Uh, during the, after the Lebanese Civil War, it's like uh, in the late 1980s maybe. Yeah, the Syrian army captured it and used it to torture people. It used to go all the way to Europe, the biggest and busiest station during the First World War between the Middle East and Europe. This train station, according to the government, is still operational because there are 300 registered workers who still get paid for maintenance and operation. And there's what? A, yeah. What are they maintaining? Nothing. They get paid by the government as a governmental job. And they, there's a, like the, the manager, the railway manager. Like but do they ever come here and actually do no, stuff? I, or I they think just... they're dead maybe. Or... Oh, okay. Some people are still alive, some people maybe are dead, but they're all registered and they still get paid. Wow, that's mad. Yeah. <laughs> Lebanese government logic. <laughs> oh, at least someone's getting some use out of this place. These sheep seem to like it a lot. Oh, here's a little baby one. They wanted to make it a museum or someone did, it was going to happen in 2010, but then local politicians were basically like, fuck that, we don't want to do it. Very sad, the government problems here in Lebanon are large. Well, we've left the train station and we're now going to the, the wetlands, Thomas. We're going the to the wetlands. wetlands. Yeah, I mean wetlands. Cool. To the wetlands. All right, we're in the wetlands now, which could almost be like, I don't know, Bordeaux or Tuscany. It's like, it's what I mean about Lebanon is... People think it's like the rest of the Middle East. Like most people just think it's desert, but there's actually no desert here. It's, yeah, super unique and just really nice. It's just such incredible landscapes. So we're now in the bird watching hut. 
which Thomas goes to at 4.30 a.m. because <laughs> he is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly there. You gotta make a wish. I didn't. You can't tell us what it is or it won't come true. Yeah, I have to? No, you can't or it won't oh, come true. Fresh mountain spring water. <laughs> Tastes good. In from the coast, riding like the wind and racing the We've now come to a winery to sample some Lebanese wine. Lebanese wine is good? Yes. The best in the Middle East? No. No? No, no. Only in the Middle East. <laughs> I was gonna say, wine is very rare in the Middle East. Some wineries here uh, tend to send uh, grapes to France or wine even to France. It's uh, very high quality. See about Lebanon, is it's basically 50% Muslim, 50% Christians. You have the Christians who obviously drink, party, you know, just live life, and then the Muslims who are more. Traditional, uh, the Quran obviously forbids drinking and whatnot. So, yeah, it's a very mixed culture here. This is where we need to be when the nuclear war hits. There's <laughs> <laughs> more wine than I've ever seen. So, these wine bottles up here, you probably can't even see them because my camera sucks in low light, but. Um, they're the first ever brewed bottles here and they're only for the family. <laughs> Thank you. Smile, 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 smile. So the faster it comes down, the older and more sugary the wine. The less sugary, the faster. Ah, okay. Well, I never knew that. Wine legs. Oh, the alcohol eat the sugar in it. True. So, so the more alcohol, the faster. This is the five senses. You touch the cup, you touch the wine, you feel the temperature, then you see the wine, the color, and then you smell it. Three senses, you taste it, and then you need to hear it, so you do a cheers. <laughs> <laughs> right now for the, the Chardonnay. The rosé. By the sunset, my baby. <laughs> Thank you. The red now. Thank you. Hey, mm. Dela, when you drink it, you should do this. I'm gonna show you. Try it, but don't choke on it. <laughs> don't choke and die. <laughs> Very dry. <laughs> yeah, I like that. <laughs> You're coughing. <laughs> you choked on it. You got like stuck in my throat. Ooh, Let me try again. Light. Mm. You need to hear the bubbles. Technique. If you do it like this way, it's easier. Like bend. Mm -hmm. yeah. and then you can feel the dryness in your mouth. It's dry. In England, this is what we put on uh, fish and chips. Red wine? You put red wine on the fish and No, wine. vinegar. <laughs> <laughs> this must be the, uh, the founder. How oh, nice. Now I've drunk a lot of wine. Poor horse. <laughs> so this is the Anjar Citadel, built by the Umayyad civilization 
in 705, but it was not a long uh, and prosperous city as it was basically destroyed and taken over because the son of the king, called the Caliph at the time who built it, was basically defeated in 744 and the partially destroyed city because of the war was yeah left to ruin for a good drive like yeah there's a field the dj would be on top yeah we need to set that up my friends are not too uh, enamored by the ancient ruins i think they want to get lunch so a short stop i think thomas took me here just for my sake yeah, I don't want to hold them up. I think people are hungry. It's probably all that wine. It's gone to their heads. This song is the biggest banger in Lebanon. Tilly knows about this one. I want your car. I'll drive, I'll drive it later after we've had lots of Arak. <laughs> so yeah, we're going to the biggest restaurant in Lebanon now. Yeah. Shams restaurant. Shams, the sun. That's the sun. Yeah. Right. So this is what we were drinking in, uh, in Qatar. It's the special Lebanese drink. Whoa! Yeah, this shit gets you turned up. And it's made out of the grapes, the, the white grapes, the white grapes the, which are like endemic to Lebanon. So yeah, basically it tastes like licorice, like aniseed. Yeah, it has aniseed inside. Yeah. It's very so good. It's it doesn't even taste alcoholic, which is the where the trouble begins. So this is a uh, Lebanese lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Patata ballon, <laughs> inflated potato, which I didn't believe I didn't believe existed, but here it is. There you go. It's like potato with air inside. Yeah. Oh. That's good. I'm waiting. I keep thinking it's over and they bring more food. So now we have chorizo, something else in the middle. What's this? Chankli. It's cheese. Cheese with herbs and tomato and onion. Looks delicious. Time to eat. Halewe. <laughs> So we finished the mound of food we've eaten and now you get in this restaurant free dessert. A ridiculous amount of fruit and chocolate. <laughs> As if we can eat any more. Sanity. Right, so after one of the largest meals I've ever had and a lot of Iraq and shisha, it's time to go and now you can see the scale of this operation. The tables look kind of empty now because we had a late lunch and they're just getting ready for dinner but this restaurant does 10,000 covers a day which is just insanity there's four rooms just like this a bowling alley a playground a shop all kinds of cuisine not just arabic stuff they got sushi here they got pizza they got everything it's mental absolutely mental no idea where we're going now feeling a bit wonky let's find out I'm good, how are you? They have a 5D cinema. Look, look. Press the, the wipers, they're not. No, 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 no. You can press it here. <laughs> Why is there even a button on there? <laughs> <laughs> Look what I found in Thomas's house. The official beer of the FIFA World Cup 2022. Yeah, that's only one, but four. Oh yes, you had loads because you gave me some, didn't you? Yeah, that's one. <laughs> These cups are legendary from Qatar because alcohol was so precious there. 
Yeah, yeah there's loads of good, stuff. Good memories. Fifteen dollars it would cost you to fill one of these with a can of Budweiser. Yeah. Damn you, Qatar. Now we're heading to uh Thomas Thomas who's? Faddy. Faddy. Yeah, Thomas's uh, childhood friend's house to uh like his best friends to continue drinking. What a day. <laughs> what a day. So we were chilling at Thomas's friend Faddy's house for what like two hours? Yes, three hours? I don't even know. It's, it's like half twelve now. We, we seem to be on the way to Beirut. Um, which is like, what, 20 minutes from where you live? Yeah. One of the advantages of Lebanon is it's super small. Um, so we're going to Thomas's friend's bar. And Thomas, you slept for what, three hours last night? Yeah, maybe three, four hours. And you're getting up at 6 a.m. tomorrow? Yeah, definitely. And we're going out. Uh, this guy is a machine. I got up at 6.30 a.m. because I had to be at his house at 8 a.m. And yeah, I'm flagging a bit, but I'm, I'm powering through. He's inspiring me. That's um, the way to go. Yeah, this is the way. So I'll, I'll see you in Beirut. This guy freaks me out every single time I get back to my house. All right, I've made it back to my town of Biblos. This is my apartment. I've got a little home gym, pretty lit. Uh, bedroom is in here. Dark as fuck in the light, and the light's in the corner. You have to see that another time, or maybe never. Um, yeah, it's like 3 a.m. I've been up since half six. Probably should have ended this a long time ago, but obviously I was just, yeah, drinking, forgot to film, chilling with Thomas and his Lebanese friends. And yeah, it's been a great day. The people of Lebanon are just so, I don't know, like chilled out, kind, like everyone I met today was just, yeah, so nice. I mean, Thomas, especially, obviously, I've known him a while. We met in Qatar, but, like, he's just such a legendary guy. Like, his love of country music. He's a scout leader. So, like, all of those people who were with us earlier in the day, uh, can't even remember their names right now. Peter, uh, Melanie, Lynn, and Rita um, were all, like, kind of his slightly below-ranked scouts, and they were just having, like, a wholesome scouts day. That's why they were all with us. Something about the Middle East, I don't know, I just feel so at home here. It's like that Arab hospitality and just, yeah, kindness is, is really nice. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this little first taste of Lebanon. Uh, believe it or not, I'm actually getting up at like, again tomorrow to go to an all day party in Patroon on the beach, which is, I've been told is like the I, I beefer of, um, of Lebanon, so we'll see what that what 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 that is like. Sure, it'll be good fun. More drinking. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go to bed, and I'll see you next week from another for another video from Lebanon. Peace out.